Thank you, Professor Ashraf, for this invitation, Dr. Walid also. Uh, I'm happy to be with you for the first time. I spent my life with a hepatic patient. And I wish I end with life, not with Corona. Uh, perioperative management in chronic hepatic patients, something that might be very easy and very complicated at the same time. The agenda of today will be about the size of the problem that might be different from one country to another, type of surges suspected in hepatic patient, and it, it would be wise to do elective surgery in hepatic patient or wait for advanced hepatic patient and how to reverse this illness. And in between brackets, the most important is hepatic blood flow and fluid management versus albumin and perioperative and postoperative management. Please, will, I'll repeat this many times, please do no harm. Please do no harm. Sometimes, today afternoon, I was kidding with Dr. Walid that now he isn't afraid to do a patient with diastolic dysfunction or ejection fraction 10%. All of us now might not be sad to do anesthesia for this patient but sure we will be sad if we do anesthesia for a better child C. What's the problem? Now the first uh, interactive question, please. I'm waiting your answer in your locality. Just one minute. Surgery in cirrhotic patient, about 10% are subjected in the last two years, 40% in the last two years, 10% in the last two years, or 5% in the last years of their life. We know all that hepatic patients are subjected, should be subjected, something due to the complications of it. When your locality might be 20%, 40%, 10% or 5%. Now I'm waiting your answer. I say this is an introductory question. We might go now to the answer, please, Professor uh, Dr. Walid. Uh, we still have uh, 10 seconds more to go. Okay. This is the simplest question today. Answer, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is a good answer that it may be equivocal. So there is no accurate data about the percentage. I'll do some person in my locality. Please close. So we will see that it is subject is that 10% of patients are subjected to surgery in the last 10 years. If, if you have, for example, in Egypt about 10 million, so we are discussing the problem of 1 million patient might be undergoing surgery during their life. We have many times about this, either tumor, drugs, viral parasites, and, so, and now NASH, now NASH, NASH is a growing and obesity might have some specific data of secure operation for them. So we have 10% of patients might be subjected in the last years in their life. The last second question, no, it's not a question, but do you feel is it safe for anesthesia and surgery hepatic patient? This is a very old question, a very old question. And a very recent question that no, not to do hepatic surgery in hepatic patient, they are, might be subjected to liver failure, sepsis, hemorrhage, and mortality about 60%. This was in the year 2062, 1962, uh, But another professor, both were surgeons. Better results with good perioperative care, the mortality might now go down to 80%. I think now this is the tradition now that hepatic patient can go with precautions, with good preoperative care. The, the manific, the, that preoperative care in the group of Cyrenic that was compared to his normal patients. The gorzals in hepatic patient was better than hepatic patients because the care that was done. This is a sample of the operation done. But just look to cholecystectomy and hernias. Most patients, hepatic patients, will undergo cholecystectomy or hernia, especially if the small gallstones. Do we wait without surgery, or we do something called elective cholecystectomy or elective hernias? This is a big question to be answered. 
What's surgery? So surgery is a plant trauma. With all my respect to surgeon, surgery is a plant trauma, but anesthesia is modulation of cervical stretch. In the four items, unconsciousness, antinociception, amnesia, and muscle relaxation, and organ reserve regulations. Don't forget that either an hepatic patient or not hepatic patient, the modern techniques and anesthesia and drugs today are made as being safe and easy. So unless you are a physician, you are a technician. But the problem is with hepatic patients that we have a narrow margin safety drugs. So please do no harm. Please do no harm. Second question, please, Dr. Walid. Uh, the normal hepatic blood flow is 100 milli per 100 gram liver weight or 550 milli per 100 gram or 200 milli per 100 gram or 150 milli per 100 gram. Both are measured per 100 gram of liver, not the patient, not per kg. So 150, 200, or 150. 90% of our interest in the management will be about the regulation of the hepatic blood flow and the keeping the blood flow or modulation of the hepatic blood flow or reperfusion injury of the hepatic blood flow. Five seconds more and we'll close the poll. The right, yeah. Equivocal, this means that we have lack of interest about the normal physiology that is, might be very important. The right answer is 100 milli blood per 100 gram of liver weight. Preoperative preparation for all the patients, we should have these four items, diagnosis, post-surgical and medical, hepatic reserve and vital organ reserve, reversible illness, and morbidity and mortality. What about if the di surgical diagnosis is very important? Yes. The most important surgical problem that we just should be discussed with the surgeon and anesthetist is hepatic surgery. Medical heart, kidney, pulmonary, cerebral, just look for that. This is a lower deliver. We have eight segment. Why I'm saying that hepatic surgery should be discussed with the surgeon and anesthetist. If you look for this, this is segment four. This is overriding of the port hepats. If I have operation for segment four, normally I awake at five o'clock in the morning and prepare everything. But if it is segment seven and eight, Normally, it is a little bit easier, but just look for the position of the lever that will be turned forward. And now we have up and down many, uh, uh, disturbance of the arterial blood flow. So, hepatic blood flow is important. Question number three. Uh, yeah, we have many uh, liver function tests. The bilirubin is one to one to two, AST is what, 10 to 40. Albumin is 14.4 to 2.4. GGT is 9 to 48. Which one is abnormal? Abnormal. I'm not speaking about the normal. Which one of this is abnormal? I think, uh, uh, Dr. Walid, uh, enough 30 seconds. Um, Most questions are uh, very simple. I think in one minute, we are getting more than 50%. Uh, okay. if, we, if we say 30 seconds, we'll get only 30%. Oh, so, okay. yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's in front of my eyes now. Mo okay, perfect. Most of people are afraid always, is it? Okay, uh, yeah. 71% are answering the good answer is albumin range. It's quite right. So my guess is quite right. We all think about albumin and think little about hepatic blood flow. The right answer is albumin, which is very low in this case. Question number four, please. Portal hypertension is considered as gradient above six, gradient above eight, gradient above 10, gradient above 12. 
which is the right answer to define the hepatic vein pressure gradient to define portal hypertension. That's because sometimes portal hypertension might be contraindication from the start or might be a worse manifestation during surgery. So we should know a number of that. Portal hypertension, six above six or above eight or above 10 or above 12. Ten more seconds to go. We have sixty-five percent voted this time, so a lot of increase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So the right answer now we have forty-four percent. This means that more than fifty percent uh, don't know the right answer, but the, mainly this will improving the answers. That's very good. So the right answer is hepatic vein pressure gradient more than 10 millimeter mercury. Uh, now, this is my abbreviations acronym about the irreversible A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. By the way, my father was an English teacher, so I'm a little bit uh, <laughs> perfect in English. Uh, a, B, C, D, e, F. If we can memorize this A, B, C, D, e, F, we can look to the patient in a numerical way and an acronym way but think about ABC in a circular manner. That's, this means that all of them are important at the same level. So A, ascites, B, blood, glucose, blood gas, and pH, C, coagulation, D, drugs, E, electrolytes, F, food and fluids, G, uh, glucose, uh, H, hematemesis, infection, all these ABCDF are reversible enzymes that might and should be corrected before uh, going to the orange. And number one is, Ascites. We know that ascites has altered hemodynamic, altered respiratory, but the most important, we always forget that it is a low complement that increase infection. So no patient is allowed to go to the operation with ascites. It should be treated in a mandatory by bed rest, sodium restriction diuretics. It is a function of the hepatologist, but we should insist it. But your opinion about this patient was huge, huge hernia. He was left by this hernia until he arrived to this way. Do you think that it was a good decision that to leave him to do hernia without repair? Or it should, it was a better advice that might be done while this patient was a child A to have operation done before, and I mean elective. So elective, my opinion, my experience, sorry for this statement, uh, uh, experience in the evidence-based way is not, doesn't work, but my long experience that patient with hernias and multiple gallstones should be operated as soon as possible. Please do no harm. This is the patient who's refusing by the hepatologist to do hernia repair in an elective way while he was a child A. Now he left to child C, and this was the about one every three days we do something like that. Uh, blood and gas pH. Normally, metabolic alkalosis is hazards that because it increases the passage of ammonia to the blood-brain barrier. Can we induce alkalosis in hepatic patient? The answer is yes, by hypokalemia, by drugs, nasogastric, and by repeated FFPs. FFPs are worse management for hepatic patient if not needed. Please do no harm. So no need to repeat it. FFPs might aggravate the metabolic alkalosis. By C, coagulation, simply we can prepare the patient in the three phases vascular phase, coagulation phase, and fibrolytic phase. By the vascular phase, I mean endocellular and platelet, where transfusion, this is crucial, 50,000 millimeter cubic is essential or least or sufficient or any word you can say. You don't mean no more than that, but don't mix between the prognostic value of platelets in hepatic resection and the necessary amount for good hemostasis. For a good 
assessment of the bed for a section, a bed platelets better to be not less than 100. But for surgery, even with great surgery, 50% 50 50,000 50, are sufficient. If less than that, and we are doing a major surgery, one unit per 10 kg or eight to 12 units initially. Pharmacological advisement and this will proceed. Please do no harm. There is no need to transfer this platelet with a patient to 70,000 or 100,000 or 120,000, even outside the diabetic patient. Uh, coagulation phase, prolongation of prolongement time need nothing. If you have a patient prolonged three seconds, do nothing. That's because normal hemostasis need only 30% of each coagulation factor. We don't need 100% of the coagulation factor. We need only 30%. Do no harm, please no transfuse if not needed. If needed, and I assume that the patient has deficiency equation factors, so 30% will be transfused in a manner of three to four fresh frozen plasma units or cry precipitate if fibrinogen is less than 100. Please do no harm, no transfusion, do no harm, do no harm used immediately when needed, used immediately, no need to prepare the patient with a hepatic patient. He has, for example, a PT or IMR prolonged, and we will prepare him for any operation. No need to stay at, at home or at the hospital for three days and each day give him plasma, two units plasma. This is harmful. This is not nonsense. This is harmful. Please do no harm. Or the patient might have fibrinolysis. It, it is diagnosed by prolonged increased FDPs or rotum with a fish tail sign like that. It is treated by aprotonin or tranexamic acid. Uh, question number five, please. Hepatic resection, good prognosis. Platelet count more than 50,000, more than 100,000, more and 100,000 and uh, elastography values more than 30. So A or B or C. Ten seconds to go. Number of answers increasing or decreasing, Dr. Ali? Increasing. Okay. Uh, more participation. I think I uh, said the answer during <laughs> during my talk. So, uh, fifty-two percent are concentrating with me, and the remaining are not well concentrated. That's because I said one hundred thousand platelets and trans elastography. Less Prof. Uh, Magdi, are you still with us? Yeah. Uh, you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah, Hello? I hear you well, Dr. Magdi, no problem. Okay. Uh, Prof. Magdi, I think we lost you. Uh, yeah, Walid, I, I, can, I can hear him. Walid? Maybe the problem is with Dr. Walid. Hepatic uh, resection, a good prognosis in patient with more than 100 and elastography less than 26. About the drugs, if you are dealing with any hepatic patient, you will see that he has a bucket, a bucket of drugs, diuretics, AAs, beta blockers, laxative antibiotics. So you think about each drug individually. And uh, yes, just Prof. Uh, I think it, it was my it was my low internet problem. So it was from okay. my side. But I think of, uh, yeah. most most of people are hearing me well. Okay, so we have. Just just an answer for all these drugs. Number one, if the drug is hepatotoxic, stop using it. If the drug has side effect to the liver, modulate. 
if the drug has different pharmacodynamic, you have to modulate the this, the, the this for example, each uh, six hour will be uh, 12 hours and so on. So you have to know the pharmacological uh, and pharmacological, pharmacokinetic and pharmacokinetic of any drug given of the, of the patient. Electrolyte, as we said that hyponatremia is not mandatory to treat except it is less 120. If it is 130, 125 million. But hypokalemia and hypomagnesia as previous should, should be treated. Many causes of. Don't lead the patient to go to operation while he has hypokalemic or hypomagnesemic. But the problem is that magnesium and phosphor and calcium are, are intracellular. So the manifestation and the patient has many, many factors that go to be, to be in hypokalemia or hypomagnesemia. So you might do double or triple correction of normal patient in hepatic fish. Don't hesitate if you can give. I'm uh, uh, question number six only. I forgot the last one. The most important is food. We lost many generations of hepatic patients because the, our, the medical advice is stop eating protein. So they went to sarcopenia. Sarcopenia is a muscle wasting. So food, protein, color, now I'll start to be uh, antagonized by many attendees. Protein, color, malnutrition, hepatic affect liver capacity to regenerate. So what a relation with hepatic Regeneration, the number one, and also with the outcome of the operation, improvement of nutrition will improve outcome of the operation. The astonishing data now written in all guidelines of ESPEN European guidelines, American guidelines, Canadian guidelines, and Australian guidelines that calorie requirement, if based on lean body mass, are increased. Caloric uh, is critical for efficient use of protein, and also, 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 also that protein requirement should be increased. Normally, we give normal patient from 8.8 .8 to 1, and for hepatic patient from 1 to 1.25 gram per kg per day. What's the problem about that? We previously, in the last 30, it might be in Egypt only, I don't know, all over the world, we advise the, the many patients to take matchbox of protein. This matchbox is about 50 gram meat, not 50 gram protein. But if we can imagine the crime we did, that one gram protein equals three to four gram meat. So if you advise the patient to take 80, for example, 80 gram meat, this is equivalent to 20 gram protein, which is and so by so the patient went to uh, protein breakdown and muscle breakdown and sarcopenia. But food and preoperative food, it is like any another patient that oral is better than enteral and better than parental parental nutrition, and then lastly total parental nutrition. Calories 30, most of them should be carbohydrate. Proteins, as we said, should be increased in multivitamins, multiminerals, and salt water cautiously. If you are speaking about salt and water cushion, we see it by mouse, but practically speaking, might fall into hypernatremia. How? You stop doing sodium, but you give the patient, for example, a clefrat or any uh, antibiotic, which is mainly one gram sodium. So you are giving him, so just not to get, and not stop giving antibiotic, but make into consideration that I made him to give three grams of uh, sodium. These needs are normal, do no harm. Fluids. Uh, hepatic patients are hypovolemic normally, and they have most of water and salt retention outside of the sculpture. With a stormy induction, you might have the patient severe hypotension. Question number six, Walid, please. You hear me? Okay. Uh, this is the most important question. I uh, made a challenge with Dr. Walid in the morning that this question to be done or not. Normal physiological saline, sodium 154, chloride 154, pH 7.4, osmolality 290. Or B, sodium 154, 
chloride 154, pH 7 with mineralty 290. And C, number C, number C, you wrote it A. Number C, 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 the third one, sodium 145, chloride 145, pH 5.7, and the osmolarity is 308. And D is sodium 144, 154, and pH 6.7, and osmolarity is 2730. Five please, seconds uh, more to go. Please, uh, Walid, a prize for this for one who will answer this. I, I think, uh, well, I gained the challenge. I gained the challenge. Walid? Walid? Uh, yeah, yes, Prof. I gained the challenge. I, I didn't get you, sorry. I gained the challenge that the right answer is a little bit about 22 percent <laughs> of the this is one of the most tricks in our daily life that we always know, say that normal physiological saline, it is abnormal physiological saline. The answer is, if we look to the chloride and sodium, it is 154. This is because it is a rule of electrochemical gradient. It never to be one of the one, it should be the same number. But the pH is acidotic and the osmolality is hyperosmal. So it is now called abnormal physiological saline. So please uh, make a little bit attention about the composition of uh, any fluid. Why this chart, it is a little bit complicated, uh, just to memorize it, please, that is a plasma we doing, we're trying to do similarity, but for sodium chloride, yeah. If we look for this, it is sodium chloride is hyperosmolar and Ringer injection is hyperosmolar. I think it was, Sodium chloride and Ringer are both similar and the same disadvantage, except with minimal potassium uh, and calcium, but higher, higher, higher chloride. So Ringer lactate is hypo. Uh, now I think Dr. Amra will speak about TBI. So uh, Ringer lactate and Ringer acid are hypoosmolar. I think he will mention it. If you look to the pH for all, Sodium, Ringer are acidotic. Acetate, lactate, both the four are acidotic. If we look for sodium chloride and Ringer, both are similar in the same disadvantage. So you haven't to change anything if you do Ringer instead of sodium. Nothing, nothing, nothing. The same hyperchloremic acidosis might happen. Ringer lactate and Ringer acetate are similar in hypoosmolar are similar in hypo, not, not relatively, chloride content are minimal. The third question about the drugs. So drugs, a choice and the amount and amount and timing. Choice and amount timing. How much we can give to a hepatic patient? These two examples, I have, I have to have one equipment to tell me that. If you have patient with heart rate, both, both the cases are have the same problem. Heart rate is increased, mean arterial pressure are low, stroke volume are low. So we have three parameters are low on both patients. But which one might benefit of fluids, volume respondent? If we look, this is the same problem for both patients, but the main pathophysiology is different. Look for that. Stroke volume resistance, here is low and here is high. In stroke volume variation is normal and here is high. So this patient needs fluids and needs this patient needs vasopressin. So you have something with you, not to deal with drugs in a moment and HOs. These are the crystalloid for, for the albumin. Albumin only at three approved indications. Prevention of cardiovascular and renal dysfunction with large volume paracentesis, treatment of subacute bacterial peritonitis, and treatment of renal syndrome. Please, no other indication. It is harmful. It is not only costly, it is harmful and it's useless. 
The main problem is that albumin is done by a technique, pasteurization is exposure to 60 degrees for 10 hours. So it loses its negative charge. So it will go from the infusion to the blood to the urine. The half-life of synthetic albumin is 24 hours. Albumin is not indicated, is not indicated. ARDS, septic shock, TBI, major trauma, hypoalbuminium chronic, kidney transplantation, hemorrhagic shock, abdominal compartment syndrome. If you give it some, it happened with me uh, and my institute that as a sort of recommendation, if the patient has a relative in the department, he uh, is mild acidic, please give him albumin 20%. And the second day, the patient went severe hematemesis and went out. Please do no harm. Please do no harm. Please do no harm. Albumin is not wise indication. Glucose. LG glucose percent of hepatic patients are diabetic because of insulin resistance. As many possible surgeries to, to lead to insulin resistance, but the patient is the hepatic diabetes. Okay. The only as many other patients is that we have to keep as, uh, as uh, recent guidelines of the old guidelines now, it is not recent, that we have to keep the blood pressure to 150 to 180. Hematemesis should be corrected preoperatively and postoperatively. Infection should be meticulously treated in a patient with a strong antibiotics, uh, and a specific antibiotic. Hematemesis infection, please do no harm. Hepatic reserve is a very, uh, crucial sound. We have many, 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 many indications about the hepatic reserve, but about the calculations. So we have three well-known scores, ASA, child both class score, and mild mild score. Seven. Question seven, Walid, please. Yeah. Cardiac output in cirrhotic patient, three liters per minute, five liters per minute, Nine liters per So more than 60% voted on 45 seconds will terminate the poll if you agree, Prof. Okay, agree. So the right answer is uh, very good, very good, very good. The right answer, night liter, the patient is hyperdynamic with uh, uh, cardiac output higher than normal. So the right answer is nine liters per minute. As, uh, as we all know, as anesthetist might be, but we, hepatic patient, as a start, is considered as three or four, okay? Look for these two examples about the MILD score. MILD score normally account for the calculation of bilirubin, serum, uh, serum sodium, INR, and serum creatinine. Look for that. If to the left, we have this patient that might be, we can say child A, for example. He has a score of nine. He has a mortality of 1.9, 3.87. This patient has a little bit advanced, he has a MILD score 32 and he has a mortality of 52 to 74. So my advice is with a patient that should be surgically operated hernia and small gold stones, it is better to be done in a child estate. Prediction of mortality and mortality, we have many, 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 many times that has been Mayo Clinic that scores that to be done. Aside treated, we said that cirrhosis is in inevitable. Creatinine might be uh, treated, COPD treated, infection treated, GITB treated, IRS. Hypotension. Hypotension, it should be defined if less than 20% decrease the primary blood pressure for, that, for more than 10 minutes. This is considered as an event incident of operative hypertension and the high surgical score. So nine and 10 could be modulated. Could be modulated uh, eight, please. Oh, 
which can have a bleeding uh, in, uh, in surgery, platelet count less than, uh, more than, more than 50,000, fibrillation level less than 100, PT more than, less than 15 seconds, and all of the above. And that is the last question. So be generous, please. I might say answer you. What, what would you mean by general answer? I, I tell them the answer, for example. <laughs> be generous. <laughs> generous with share. <laughs> share your thoughts. I think it's, it's improving. Yeah, the number is increasing. There might be more participation. I might do the next lecture with uh, more than that, more than questions like that. 60% and the 40%, I think, is they left, for example, to take tea or. Uh... Okay, the right answer is tricky. Uh, what is the answer? Ah, yes, it is tricky. Tricky. All of the above is not the right answers because platelet less than more than 50 is right enough. Fibrillation is as hard as uh, uh, prosthrombin pine less than uh, 15 seconds. All of the above is not is a tricky question. So the right answer is fibrinogen and should be corrected. Hepatic blood flow. Hepatic flow, we always uh, look for the hepatic flow in two levels, systemic cardiac output, systemic vascular resistance, and so on, regional by the arterial buffer, and don't look for the microcirculation. The microcirculation is a balance between, balance between uh, vas dilator as well as constrict. The most important is that sinusoids in the celiac cells may survive a period of ischemia, but die from hyperfusion. It is strange that if you regain the systemic blood pressure, the hepatic internal circulation might take about 60 to 90 minutes to come back after hypertension. So the main function of the anesthetist during the very operative and initially operative is keeping the uh, blood pressure and hepatic blood flow. Sure, laparotomy, laparotomy increase hepatic blood by 80% and the anesthesia by 20%. And they're always accusing anesthesia. So laparotomy, if it is better to be some, uh, replaced by laparoscopy, it is better. General anesthesia is very simple nowadays. Small doses. Please remember this statement, small dose of multiple drugs means side effects of none. The goal is to avoid drug accumulation toxicity, maintain hepatic blood flow, again maintain hepatic blood flow, maintain hepatic blood flow, and reduction of blood loss, and avoid the respiratory alkalosis. And opioids, opioids are safe. Opioids are safe. Opioids are safe. And less hazard than pain. Morphine is only affected by glucuronidation, which is affected lastly with the patient's going to die. So with a compensated patient, no IBAS. The, if we say we, we were uh, taught that pesadine is safe, no, that's the thing. If you will stop any of the narcotics, stop pesadine. And codeine, telidine, and tramadol is not active. An uh, active metabolite is analgesic, so it is not highly effective as a normal patient. But the family fentanyl, so fentanyl, and fentanyl are not highly affected in liver disease, so it could be used with little decreasing of the dose. Monitoring is very important. This is not statement. It's not like any treatment. Intravenous line, at least, if you are going to do hepatic surgery or abdominal surgery in a hepatic patient, please keep inflow one liter per minute at least, which equivalent to hepatic blood flow. If the surgeon, sometimes it might happen that they might injure the porter. If you are doing intravenous from outside less than one liter, you might lose the patient. And blood warm and uh, rapid infusion system. CVP not to measure. Uh, we, don't, we don't use CVP as a measurement of, but we keep the CVP as low as possible for uh, decreasing the outflow of the liver so we have not congested liver. Blood pressure non invasive, entitled CO2 is important. Urine output. These patients are more hazards, are more to act to, are more uh, uh, exposed to AKI. Uh, urine output should be measured at hourly, okay, and temperature also. Temperature is very important. Every decrease in one degree of temperature increase blood loss by 22%. 
and we also wrote them for the measurement of coagulopathy. This is fibrin lysis. This is normal. This is platelet deficiency. This is fibrinogen deficiency, and so on. So uh, it is an, it might be another uh, another lecture, but Rotam can differentiate. Number one, if this patient has bleeding, this is hundred percent surgical. But these figures are passive physiology of coagulopathy, and that should be treated to stop bleeding. Post-operative care, analgesia. Please, no, no non-steroidal uh, acids. Morphine infusion, PCA, might be parastamol is safe in a decreased dose, respiratory therapy, and so on. Early enter nutrition, and early enter nutrition, and early enter nutrition. Effect of pain on the liver. Acute severe atraumatic pain induces and increases the ability of the liver to convert amino acid. Number two, the response to pinching were dependent on the uh, simulated pinching of the abdomen decrease while pinching the handicap increase the lipatic blood flow. So pain decrease the lipatic blood flow. So please don't get an excuse that you are not treating the pain because because it is opioid, uh, it will go delayed recovery. Local anesthesia opioid delayed recovery. Drug toxicity. This is nonsense. This is nonsense. If you treat that those pain relief is important. And the most magnificent is the combination of GA and the local regional recommendation per leaf is one of the human rights. Pain decreases lipatic blood flow more than analgesic drugs. Operative narcotics decrease in drug uses of anesthetics. Narcotics have great safety in lipatic if used, if they treated properly. Parastamol toxicity is dose dependent. It is not the parastamol is toxic, it is the metabolite which is toxic and the metabolite is toxic only with higher dose and with uh, a good swing deficiency. I think most of you now are bored of this because I think at this time, I say oh, exactly, exactly about 40 minutes. If you forget all of what I said, just remind all things that might be done in normal patient should be done in a hepatic patient. No excuse to do in bad circumstances. Dealing with non-optimum conditions like great effort with bad outcome. Thank you for your patience. And I'm now ready for my exam. I, I, I made the eight questions. I'm ready to 80 questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Nagdi, uh, it's a very, very nice presentation. Very interesting. So we have some questions here. Uh, I hope we have uh, maybe three or four of them. To answer for, and now the most important uh, question uh, now is on the screen is about the evaluate the, uh, the multiple choice. I think 100 percent. And now I'm, I saw the answer. 100 percent excellent. <laughs> this is this is just for uh, attendees uh, to document yes. the of the lecture. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Your your brilliant evaluation from <laughs> Uh, so yes, we can take uh, we can take uh, we can take the uh, the questions uh, while this uh, polling is here. Okay, uh, should I ask the question now? Yeah, go ahead. Please. But, yeah. Just, who is asking? There, who's there's asking? a question. Who is asking? Amhar Fathi. Okay. Doctor Amhar is asking if uh, with which type of replacement we should start, platelets or fresh frozen plasma or what? I'm not sure about what. Well, uh, maybe correction of coagulation uh, disorders. Should okay. we start with platelets or fresh frozen? What's your advice? My advice, and I think it will be the same answer in TBI the next uh, presentation, that if you are going to hypertensification to the pharmacy, you don't try it antihypertensive drugs. You write either beta blockers, essential blockers, ACE, ERB, and so on. So by Rotem, uh, may I go back to uh, the slides? You can, you can share your, your slides again, uh, Prof. Monty. Okay. If we look, uh, uh, Dr. Anhar, about this figure about the Rotem, it is the answer of your question, either platelets, fibrinogen plasma. So if you have a figure like that and you have bleeding, it is a surgical bleeding. 
whatever you give to the patient will, will not stop bleeding. That's because he's a normal hemostasis. If you have figures like that, he has a problem either in platelets or fibrinogen or in fibrinolysis. So I think this is your answer. So platelets and fresh rosmerosma are not synonymous. For thrombocytopenia, we give platelets and for deficiency of coagulation factors, we give a fresh frozen blood. But either platelets or fresh frozen are not given chronologically or without a need. It is given for coagulopathy instantaneously. Okay. Okay. Uh, there, there is very interesting question here about the difference between range of blood plate and range of. Uh, I, cannot, I cannot hear. I cannot hear. Yeah. Uh, the question again. The question again is the difference between range of blood plate and range of acetate. Which one? Should we do this is from the case uh, and both, for, for, norm, for normal patients, both are quite right. But for hepatic patient, a ringer acetate. That's because acetate is metabolized in the muscles. And lactate, as we know, it is uh, if you have a problem in the hepatic metabolism, you will add more lactate. So you are giving lactate, which is not metabolized, and the liver is giving lactate, so you are adding more lactate to the body. So uh, Ringer lactate is not wise crystalloid for the hepatic patient, Ringer acetate. Okay, um, here another question from uh, Dr. Anhar. I guess you also enjoyed it for uh, uh, so, so, uh, yeah. I think the voice is uh, has a little bit echo. I don't know why, I cannot hear it. Okay, the question is, which is already answered in the lecture, use of albumin in COVID-19 patients with renal endowment. I guess yes. Dr. Uh, Majdi mentioned that there is no indication for albumin except in certain very limited indications, yeah. like yeah. Uh, hepatorenal syndrome, yes. uh, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, and yeah. otherwise uh, it increases mortality and not of any yeah. benefit. Yeah. Do you agree with me, Dr. Majdi? What? Do you agree with me? I, I don't agree. It is not my yeah, yeah. Uh, at least it, it is not my experience. I can now share. I can uh, I can now share. We're, we're yeah, the, the evidence opinion. is very the evidence yeah, is yeah. very known about this albumin has no benefit in critical ill patients except yes. in this limited to very straightforward indication. Spontaneous bacterial growth uh, Doctor Walid, and the share rah min andi mish rah fein. Uh, your your screen is shared, uh, Prof. I will stop share, and you can reshare it. Okay. No, no, no. You can reshare. Maybe the last. Maybe the last question. Uh, is it is clear, uh, Walid. Uh, yeah. Bain Andak. Yes. Uh, guidelines from Stanford Healthcare Department about the guidelines of intravenous alum administration. This is the only reference I uh, keep it with me. That's because I know the uh, battle of album and usage. Uh, at least in Egypt. This is approved indication. This is approved indications. And here is a, a, not to be approved. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is Stanford, Stanford uh, uh, guidelines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also, and also, yeah. some is it might not be interesting, but it's not scientific that about the price, price list, how it costs the albumin versus saline. It costs many. Okay. And very good. Yeah. yeah. Very costly without benefit, yes. Uh, and, yeah. and the last question is in, uh, from Dr. Uh, Aisha again. He is worried about using protein, and he said, does using it cause hepatic encephalopathy? Using and what? You should protein. I, I cannot hear. Protein use. Protein, protein. I'm yeah. asking about to decrease the use of protein in hepatic patients. What's your advice on this? Yeah. Protein usage is increased and compensated hepatic patient. It will help the regeneration of the hepatic insult, whatever. 
as long as the patient is compensated, he should he should take 25% more than the normal patient of protein. And this protein should be adjusted, as I've said previously, that it should be 1.25 gram per kg per day for body weight, and then multiply three to four to transform into meat. And then if the patient will go down into decompensation and coma, and coma, it might be decreased, not abolished, not stopped, decreased, not abolished. This is if if he if he if he doesn't trust me or if she doesn't trust me, he can go to Aspen guidelines, Aspen guidelines, European or American or Canadian or Australian guidelines. All of them now agree that protein should be increased in hepatic patients. Okay, Doctor Doctor Samana is asking about the magnesium sulfate in hepatic patients. What about that, Doctor Magdi? Magnesium sulfate as regard to what? If the patient is hypomagnesemic, it should be it should be corrected. Is there any need for magnesium sulfate in hepatic patients very effectively? Uh, what? Uh, about sulfate? Any rule of specific rule for magnesium sulfate? Uh, normal, normally, patient, patient, as I've said in my lecture, that normally have uh, hypomagnesemia and hypokalemia, uh, especially if they are diabetic. And the compensation okay. as, as a patient might be two or threefold. You might be asking question about the sulfate per, per se or magnesium per se. I'm not, I cannot understand. Magnesium, magnesium sulfate. If, it, if, if it's a question about magnesium, normally the patient is potentially hypomagnesemic. Okay, uh, I, I think we have to stop here, uh, Dr. Magdi, and thank you very much again for this very nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, I personally enjoyed it very much. I'm, I'm very sure that everybody enjoyed. And uh, there are some other questions which might be answered directly later on through uh, chat. Uh, 